Wait, what is that? Is that my, I think that's my Holly, Sally, what? Oh my God, look at you! Is that my Jolly Wally? Is that you, friend? Hey, Jennifer. <laughs> Okay, I love this festive colors you got on, Fred. Are you Holly and are you Jolly Wally? I'm Jolly Wally. <laughs> Y'all, I love this. Okay, do you have something for me over there? Yes. What do you poem. got for me? You got a poem? I have a poem. Should I come over there and listen to your poem? Please do, Fred. Oh my God, doesn't my Jolly Wally look jolly in his <laughs> I'm coming, Fred. You look gorgeous. You look, I'm... you look adorable. You like my dress, Fred? I love it. I love Come you. On. I didn't know you. So you are, are you an elf? I'm Jolly Wally. Oh, he, oh he's Jolly Wally. <laughs> Jolly Wally is serious about this, y'all. Okay, okay, so let me hear. You got a, what do you have for me? I have a point. You do? Yeah. You gonna read, read it to me? Can I read it to you? Please me? read it to me. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Jolly Wally? From Wolf of Wall Street to Days and Confused, your very first guest has its very own booze. Mistletoe, ornaments, pine, and green holly. This is your first poem from Jolly Wally. I love it, Jolly Wally! <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Okay, thanks again, Wally. Your poem, it gave me clues, I think, to who my first guest is. Anybody figure it out? Hmm, Days and Confused, Wolf of Wall Street. It must be, come on, y'all. Matthew, I think it's Matthew McConaughey, right? It's Matthew McConaughey! Thank you, Jolly Wally! Oh my God, it's Matthew McConaughey! Hi! What a great movie this! My pleasure. Does this happen everywhere you go? No, but I, it'd be nice if it did, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh my God, he's so cool, right, y'all? <laughs> and I, I mean, I cannot believe you're here at the Jennifer Hudson show, for one, because the last time I saw you, it was at the Sing premiere. Yeah. And then Graham Norton show. Yes. Do you remember that at I do. all? Oh my God, yeah, I, I got to keep up with him. Where are we? Okay, that's Sing. That is Sing. Okay. Yes, it is. We were is. in that film together, and it did we well. Did. And it, it did, did well. Very well. Oh. You know, and now I get to sit here and chill with you make on. Make a second one. The we, yeah, second, yes, third, fourth one. Hi. I would love that. Okay, you are the coolest ever. Do you realize just how cool you are? Do you think of yourself like that? I guess look, there's so many definitions of cool. I I think, right? I mean, there's. Hey man, be cool. And then there's, <laughs> but the, the, I think the real, the real definition of being cool, and I guess when I am the coolest is when I'm just most myself. Yeah. Which is what I think is the coolest thing about any people. Well, when people are just themselves, I don't care if they're nerd, I don't care what they are. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> he even sound cool, you hear that? Are your kids as cool as you? Um, <laughs> Well, they're, well, they're, they're working on it. I, I, my my uh, son, Levi, we pulled up this old picture from a magazine when he was like three walking down the street and had a quote for me. I did not remember I said this. And they said, what's your hope for your son, Levi? I said, I, I hope he's cooler than me. And he was like, what's that mean? And I gave him that definition. I said, man, I hope you, are, you, you can learn to be yourself better than I'm trying to learn to be myself because yeah. it's, it's something to go through. The I whole love life. that. So, and Levi is your oldest son. He's huh? my oldest. And you just allowed him to join Instagram? Just allowed him for his 15th birthday. Oh, wow. That was a big decision for Camilla and I. That's a big decision. So they weren't allowed to go online, huh? That is amazing. Now, you know he wrote like this dope, cool letter about you. What do you write? Yes, let me show you. I want you to read okay. it for yourself. Let me find it. Because your kids are amazing. 
You check it out. Check it out. People think. know Matthew McConaughey as an actor and now a writer, but I know him as my father. The man who always makes time for us no matter what. The man who's always there for us no matter what. And the man that taught me to appreciate the journey and not just the destination. The journey's just getting started. Happy birthday, Papa. How yeah. cool is that? See, the things your kids will write if you pay them 100 bucks. <laughs> that make you feel like no that, that makes me feel i mean you know i did not pay him 100 bucks <laughs> but he um well it makes you feel like what you're doing as a parent's translating right you don't know some you know mirrors are a great uh, kids are a great mirror of who we are whether it's in true. friendships what someone will say about you you're like oh you're reading my mail it's nice because sometimes it's not always what you're that intended is, to be right that's right and to read that that that's what he's getting from me uh-oh. Now you get cool points from Dad. Come on. Okay. Now talk to me about this college football team. Congrats. Longhorns, the playoffs is first yeah, time? First it's going to be the first Bowl. time. Well, for, since the playoff has been around. Now uh -huh. we, we won the national championship in 2005. We got to the national championship in 2010. Lost to Alabama. We are now back in the first time in the playoffs since the playoffs has been around. So we got into the Final Four the other day. We will be playing uh, the Washington Huskies. 7.45 p.m. Oh, New Orleans Sugar Bowl. Me. I can hear it in your voice. January the 1st, 2024. The winner of that will play the winner of Alabama versus Michigan. Hopefully, we will meet them in the national championship and walk away with a victory. Uh-oh. I believe that you will. Oh, I, I can feel it in my spirit. Okay, you're the minister of culture. Yes. Can you explain what that means? Yeah. So, minister of culture. They have ministers of culture in other countries. It's not something you have in the, in the United States. They're... People that oversee in countries, uh, music, tourism, youth, sports, and sort of a self-given title mm. <laughs> to myself with the University of Texas. I teach a couple of classes there at the University of Texas. I'm involved and know a lot of the athletes. And what I've noticed is there's a lot of things that you got to do to win and be a champion on the field that you also have to do in the classroom. They're not that, not that, not that different. Whether it's uh, preparation and teamwork, uh, um, there's a lot of virtues and values you, you need to win and be a champion on the field that you also need in the classroom and in life. So the Minister of Culture is my work trying to say, hey, in the classroom at University of Texas, through the academics and on the field or in the pool or on the court or whatever sport it is, let's, let's, let's cross-pollinate these values to make sure that we're being in sports badasses with character. Mm. You know what I mean? And you're a badass too, so do you apply those things to your life and your career and all your success? I try to. I mean, I, I uh, look, sports for one has taught me mostly about preparation for my work. Yeah. Um, that's where I think a lot of my success has come from is I'll, I'll prepare more than my opponent so I can get in the game mm -hmm. and call audibles and improv and riff and let's wing it. But that's all because usually when I prepared well, I can do that. And I think that's a good lesson for life across the board. I talk to my kids about it all the time. Delayed gratification, mm. right? One of the things I think we want all of our children to understand is like, hey, you can invest in yourself today or sacrifice something today and get a reward tomorrow. Wow. Kids don't think like that, right? We want right. the cookie now. You can give me two now or I can have 10 later. Give me my two now. I'm yeah. not betting on later. <laughs> but you know, they learn to kind of bet on themselves. And I remember when I, when I won the Oscar for Dallas Fires Club, the kids were like, what's the trophy for? Uh-huh. Right? And I said, do you remember though, that, that movie Pop I was making a year ago and y'all said I look like a giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, yeah, remember that? And I said, well, the work I did a year ago, they yeah. gave my peers, gave me a trophy for a year later. And it clicked in their mind that when they go, oh, you can do something now and get a reward for it later? I said, damn right. That's, you can do that in life. You're a great teacher. Trying to be. Oh, my goodness. Cool dad, great teacher and an Oscar winner. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so you, you saw with the Surgeon General for mental health. Tell us about that. How did that work? Yeah, mental health. He reached out. He's doing a tour on campuses, and he came to the University of Texas, and he asked if I'd sit down and have a discussion with him. Um, we had a call for about 30 minutes a week before he came, mm -hmm. and that's what he's chosen to be what he thinks that needs the most fixing and is fixable in, in the United States. Um, and, I, and I think he's really on to something, this term mental health, and to, and to talk to the the youth today, um, I, you know, I, I thought that more, more younger people were, that were choosing wrong were, knew the difference between right and wrong and were just choosing wrong sometimes. And what I'm finding out is that a lot of the youth are going, no, I didn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. 
Somebody tell me the difference. Where have the values of understanding the difference of right and wrong or good and bad gone? They're murky right now. They're really murky. They're not only murky for students, they're murky, they're murky for the parents. The futures are more uncertain and how to get where you want to go in the future are more uncertain than ever before. You got these things like social media. Where right. do we get our news? We don't know the difference between fact and fiction. That is what's true. true, what's not. So if you're basing your reality on an illusion, yep. I would say that's going backwards. Mm. You know what I mean? We need to be selling dreams instead of illusions and a lot of people are basing their reality and where they want to go on illusions. And that's, that's not gonna last. There's not, not, uh, um, that's, not, that's not really sustainable, <laughs> you know, as far yes, as healthy sir. kids going forward. You better speak and be wise too and cool. Will you stick around for a little bit? Absolutely. Oh, we're grateful to have you. We'll be right back. Let's talk about this tequila. <laughs> yes. Ooh, you started this with your wife. Tell us the inspiration behind the name. Well, it's our favorite, favorite juice, tequila. So we said, well, why don't we make one ourselves? So we partnered up and made what is in this bottle called Pantalones Tequila. Took two years, 47 tastings, which those were very fun mm. to find it. On the 47th one, we found what is in this bottle right here, Pantalones. So we got good juice in there. We, we, we kind of noticed that, you know, tequila's gotten a little snooty lately. Oh. It's kind of like wine. People like to talk about tequila like wine. And we're like, no, it's tequila. Let's it's have tequila. some fun. Hence the name Pantalones, because we said, Oh, man, we've had a lot of fun with that art gone. <laughs> you look like you're going down memory lane. Go down memory lane, and then you got all these toasts, like, hey, here's the Pantalonis, because none of us would be here if our parents had to kept theirs on. Listen! We, we make cheers to our children, because <laughs> they wouldn't be here if we kept ours on. <laughs> I mean, and it goes on and on and on. So, Pantalonis, may you have fun with her. And on. there you have it. Now, do you have this billboard? and you have no pants on, please pull this up. What is happening Let me see. here? That's us. <laughs> oh, my. Thank you for the pixels. <laughs> Thank you for the pixels. That's a dope picture. Tell us where you buy the tequila at. Uh, right now, you get it at Total Wine. We're with them until the spring, and you can get also get it online. Uh, we've got uh, 7,000. It's organic, so we've got 7,000 acres of organic agave. There's not many organics out there. Um, down in Mexico, so we can get you as much as you want. And again, organic, there's not many of those out there. Good for you and a good time. All right, that sounds good. And you brought some. Brought some. Some people want to sample it some around here. Some people like to. I got a food. That man looks like My him. Jolly Wally eat a drink. You gonna help him out? Come on. Okay. Tip drink it one. Here looks like oh, what? Oh, Jolly, we have to call him Jolly Wally today. Jolly Wally. He's, he gonna get like Jolly of y'all. Once he get his tequila. <laughs> this is the Reposado, Jolly you Wally. For it? Wow. Tell us you how you like dancing it. dancing in those boots. You gonna get to dancing? I am. Come on. Salud. Salud. Merry Christmas. Merry get Christmas. Dahlia. Thank you. <laughs> Go on, Come take a sip. No, baby, I'm gonna let you do that for me. Yes, sir. Oh, this is great. <laughs> I only get one? It's a very smooth. Oh, you gonna give him two? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Nah, friend. We're going to get into some. <laughs> we'll be back. There's yes, more where that came from, Let's go share Jolly. some more. With some, listen. Let's go over okay. here. Let's Behind see. the cameras. What about this guy? Who oh, feels Jolly Wally over here? Andrew? Yeah. It's your turn. Andrew, yeah. Fisher of Men. Yeah. Your pants are on. Yes, they here are. That's for you. <laughs> this one's for you. Try this. All right. Mm. Oh, he said, mm. No, not gonna lie, I was, I was fully preparing to lie, but it's actually really good. <laughs> it's really good? Yeah. We got two, Matthew. Let's go find some more. Come on. Make this the happier place. Come on. With some tequila. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Claudia! Yoo-hoo! Oh, what we got? You got us some good drinks? I do. Back here. We got oh, plenty of Oh, my goodness. All for you. Oh, jeez. Now we get to spread the jolliness. Well, now we know we're not going anywhere later We're not tonight. going anywhere. We're going to right. celebrate no, we're not. Tonight. You going to try it? I would love to. Yes, Absolutely. Go straight before you have the margarita. There you go. Cheers. Uh, cheers. Some years, we got to have cheers. <laughs> to the fun well, that can be had. Hey. How you feel about it? Delicious. Is it good? Oh, that's delicious. 100% okay. organic, too. Yum. Yeah, 100% organic. Good. That is really good. We're going to take a couple more of these back here. We're going to take right. a couple more. We're going to bring the whole part. And I think we could find a few more. Libations, lubrications, pantalones. Is there one? Is there day. one? Oh, look at these beautiful people over here. Hello. Hey, guys, would you like to try Anyone like a sip of pantalones or posada? We love. Yes, please. Oh, thank yes. you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Oh, hang on. Amazing. Oh, you want a margarita? Oh, no. Oh, we're margarita oh. or straight? 
Menu smart. What the hell is okay. okay. it? All right. Okay, great. Okay, Tyler. That was with Blanca. Wait for Matthew. You. Are you doing it with us? Uh, yes. All right, come on. <laughs> there. Okay. Cheers. Here we go. Oh. Eye contact. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Cheers. Yep. Cheers. 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 Great. Cheers. Happy holidays. Holly Jolly. How do we like you guys? Wow. Oh my so God. So good. Is it Incredible. Good? So good. Look at this. Get jollier. Of vanilla. Course. She can keep it right. Vanilla. No, it's all organic. Wow. So good. All no organic. vanilla. Like Perfect for the holidays. Perfect That's for the holidays. Say. Holiday oh party. Oh my goodness. Let's see what we have. Thank you. You know what? I can think of one more good old friend that would love some. Oh, you're making this place good and jolly around here. I'm all right. Jollier myself. That's my third one. You all right, Claudia? Yeah, Let's coming. see who we got up in here. Okay, Mr. Oh, control. Corey. This is the control room. Bring it on. Corey, on. I brought you a treat, honey. Okay, yeah. You're going to check you it out? You brought me Matthew McConaughey. I brought you Matthew hey. McConaughey. It's my treat. I come, I come bearing gifts. Matthew and Any burrito or Reposado tasters. Do you have to choose? Start with that, then okay. hop over to a margarita. Anyone else? Mm. Oh, he says he wants it all for himself. Okay. How, how we doing? What do you think? Is it good? Oh, he wants. <laughs> it's good both ways. It's Shot. good both margarita. ways. It's old. You see yeah. that? Okay, we're gonna have a party. Anybody else want one? Well, more with Matthew. We'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. I can't help but to look at Jolly Wally, but we're back with Matthew McConaughey. So this is just a second number one New York Times bestseller still today for Just Because. I can't even comprehend it. How does that feel? Well, it feels great. I mean, look, I, I started, I've been writing all my life. I put the first book out, Green Lights. I didn't know how I was going to do it. It seemed to translate. And then I had this dream of this ditty from, that I wrote down for Just Because. And I wrote it down and put it out as a children's book. And it's doing pretty doggone well. So... You know how it is, you put any art out, and when yes. it translates, it means again, oh, like we talked about with Levi's text mm -hmm. to, uh, post about me. The reflection comes back, and if it's close to what you wanted to do, that feels good when people go, yes, I get it. Yes. I get it. Congratulations. Do you have a favorite moment or excerpt in the book? Can you tell us? Uh, I got a few. So look, this book, just because it's about, look, our children today are, 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 are even adults feel this way sometimes it's like we we're being told you got to feel this way or that away it's one or the other mm. black or white this or that uh-uh that's not just that this is not how life works right you know you can be how many times i mean my kids have said i'm really uh, i'm really nervous but i'm also excited right I, is it okay to feel those two things like yes yep it is okay to feel both actually that's good you feel both those things mm -hmm. you know so i put together these couplets that just i think open up the, the poetry and innuendo of living that say that these things aren't contradictions. You know, they, two things, two feelings can exist at once. Um, let me read this one. Here we go. I got a picture of a little girl in bed, right? Mm -hmm. Just because I'm finished doesn't mean that I'm done. Oh. Right? She, after, after mama said go to bed, she got on the covers and read, keep, kept reading the book. <laughs> we all been there, right? Yes. This one down below, just because uh, you got the gold does not mean that you have won. I love that one. Right? Look at he got yes. the he got the biggest present right. He is winning. But what did he get? Yes. He got a pair of socks. That, <laughs> right. So that's 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 actually uh, from an example of, of of in our family. My mother loves to have the most presents at Christmas. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll wrap anything and and, give it to and everything right. So we'll also do this. She likes to have the biggest presents. So we'll get a big box, wrap it really nice. She'll be like, oh, "Is that mine?" And we're like, "Oh yes, that's yours." <laughs> She's I like, oh, it. I got the biggest present. And she'll open that box, and <laughs> uh -huh. inside there is another box. Oh. And inside that box is another box. And inside that box is another box. And inside that box at the bottom, there's a little, like, Tiffany's box. And she's like, oh, you didn't. And we're like, we did. And she yeah. opens that Tiffany's box, and you know what we got in there? A Q-tip. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> like, just because you got the gold <laughs> doesn't mean that you won. Um, so anyway, it's about, it. it's about, um, you know, the the... the the poetry of life, and, and I think we need to let kids know that it's okay, especially now while you're young. You don't have to know everything. Be a kid. I Live, love try that. Things that out. is such right. a great message. Now, speaking of all them boxes and boxes and boxes, and you, you got your mama something in those boxes, I heard you brought us all something. What'd you bring us today? I did bring everybody something. Every single person here, crew and audience, you have a copy. I brought you a copy of this book. <laughs> Please enjoy. Hey. Yay! We'll be right back. Thank you.
we go. Here we go, y'all. Okay. This past summer, Barbie seemed to take over the world. It was the biggest movie of the year, and now you can own it on digital Blu-ray and 4K Ultra HD. We wanted to celebrate the movie's message of female empowerment by playing a game we are calling Barbie Say What? Let's meet our lovely contestants today. Hi, Barbie. What's your names and where are you from? Hi, Barbie. I'm Laura. I'm from Burbank, <laughs> California. <laughs> you call me Barbie. Okay. And what's your name? Hi, I'm Lynn, and I'm from Fontana, California. Nice. Hi, Lynn. Okay, so I know you two are sisters and wrote in to nominate each other for not only being Barbie super fans, but also being inspiring women just like Barbie. So tell me, what do you admire about each other? Uh, Lynn is my little sister, mm -hmm. and despite being my little sister, I admire that she is constantly trying to educate herself, improve herself, and be the best mother, daughter, wife, sister that she can be. That is so sweet. And what do you have to say about Laura, Lynn? And as my vague sister, I admire, um, I wanted to be a mother because she is a mother and such a great mother. Um, and she also just is a great, she cares for everyone. She cares for animals. She cares for people. And it's amazing. And she plans very good trips. And I just go along. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We love what you do to inspire each other. So we have given you each of you both official Barbie names. Lynn, you are Lifetime Learner Barbie. And Laura, you are Animal Advocate Barbie. Yay. OK? Thank do you me. like that? Yes. So are you ready to play? Yes. OK, let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to read a quote from the Barbie movie. Your job is to be the first to buzz in and tell me which of these characters on the screen said the line. You got, got it? it? Yes. All right, whichever one is correct, you get a point. And whoever gets the most points, of course, wins. OK. I think we got that. All right, let's go, Barbies. Y'all ready for this? Number one, who said nobody's gonna beach anyone off? Ken. Mm. <laughs> Lynn, what you got? Stereotypical Barbie. Barbie. <laughs> Marvel <Woo>! Robbie. <laughs> you got it, Lynn. Okay. All right. Next quote. Who said I'm in the splits? I have a funky haircut. Oh, you ready? Weird what you got? Barbie. You got it, Will Barbie. <laughs> Kate McLennan, okay. Quote number three, who said, everybody turn to the Barbie next to you and tell her how much, oh, oh, wow. President Barbie. You better know it, President Barbie, Ooh. Issa Rice. Lynn is on the road, okay. <laughs> Listen, come on now, Laura. Okay, final okay. quote. Who said, I just don't know who I am with uh, without you. Ken. Okay, Ken, Ryan Gosling, <laughs> okay. Lynn, you're the winner. <laughs> listen up, listen up, listen up. You know, here at J-Hub Productions, we love to celebrate everyone. So you're both going home with Barbie on 4K Ultra HD, a Barbie toy bundle from Mattel, and $250. Congratulations, ladies. Yes. Woo! Here we go, and we're going to spread the holiday cheer. So my audience is all going home with Barbie on 4K Ultra HD. Barbie is a perfect gift for the holidays and to watch with friends and family on the Barbie movie now. Happy holidays, Barbie. We'll be right back. Our next guest is a hero in my book for what he is doing in his neighborhood. From South Central LA, please welcome the founder of It's Bigger Than Us, Tyrone Nance. Listen, I can tell how big your heart is just by seeing your face come oh out here. Oh my gosh, right? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for welcoming me. The, the stage is immaculate. <laughs> this is beautiful. Thank you. I, thank you. Now, I'm new to L.A., so I'm still learning my whereabouts and all of that. So can you yeah. tell me more about the community of South Central L.A.? Yeah, so South Central is now being broadly recognized as South Los Angeles. Okay. But for South Central, it's home to me. It's where I grew up, where I was born and raised. There's culture, there's right. food, there's art, there's dance, there's music. I mean, really, to me, it's the heartbeat of Los Angeles. And oftentimes, it gets a bad rap because right. of movies or TV shows or maybe gang violence or what people see on TV. But... It is a thriving community where so many brilliant people are finding ways to impact the community using their platforms. 
I love how you advocating and highlighting that. Yeah. It's good to do for your communities. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what is it's bigger than us? I love that it's bigger than us. Yeah, because it is, right? Yes. And I, and I think it's something for us to all remember every single day. So the organization is bigger than us is a 501c3 nonprofit. Mm. That's a movement that focuses on creating impacts for communities to experience better living using community activation that tackles health equity to be able to bridge those cultural nuances. Different ways we do that is through food distributions, food disparity programs, our school programming that targets not only youth, right. but also parents and as well as teachers because they also need support. And as well as our staple events like our back to school and Christmas where we bring the whole entire community out together, where we have awesome health providers, but then you also have the, the cultural nuances of things being beautiful and aesthetically designed. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah. It inspires me to do even more. My sister and I have the Julian D. King Gift Foundation, and we do we have a similar mission. So this inspires me. Um, I'm curious to know what inspired you to do this. I heard it was the George Floyd protests and everything. Yes. Tell us about that. When the world was upside down and everyone's pausing to see what was going on, a lot of folks hit the streets. And I was an individual that hit the streets, mm -hmm. but I think what compelled me to hit the streets was I saw myself in George Floyd, right. Breonna Taylor, yes, and even. Going deeper, I saw myself as a black man in America for the first time. Mm. Being in the community organizing world and advocacy and volunteer world, I've, I've served so many different people, so many marginalized, underserved, underrepresented communities, but I never really like served myself. Right, wow. And so hitting the streets, I felt myself you know, loving on myself, encouraging myself. And even serving your community is serving yourself, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly, and, and from there, went out and hit the streets to protest. And I didn't know that I was gonna get handed a mic mm. and be able to talk to the crowd of people. So it went for me to just going and just showing up to me leading five and 10,000 people and, and, and saying like, this is what we're fighting for. This is what unity looks like. This is what love looks like. Let's yes. keep going. And at that moment, being in the center with all the people, I said, hope has to be greater than fear. That's and, why it's bigger ooh. than us. Yes. Hope has to be greater than fear. Yeah. Did, did you have that hope that this would grow to what it's become? And are you like impressed with how far you've come with it? Yeah. How many people you've touched? Absolutely. So directly after the protest, I was like, what do we do next, right? Yeah. And being in the volunteer world, I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me, right. especially in my community. So I said, hey, I started a group, I started a chat where a lot of folks from the Crenshaw community would log on to Zoom and, and get involved. Shout out to Crenshaw. Crenshaw. Shout out to Crenshaw. Oh, we heard that. Shout out to Crenshaw. <laughs> and I started a Zoom chat where a ton of dudes just hang out, connect, be able to build. Yeah. And as the group over the next few months started to kind of like die down a little bit, a, a principal at the Crenshaw High School reached out and said, hey, can you do something to bring some school supplies? Oh, so I, I hit up the that. guys chat and I said, let's do something. Let's, let's create an initiative. And we raised twelve thousand dollars in two days, got the entire school oh school supplies. I love that so much. And this is where and this is where integrity comes in. We weren't we weren't an official nonprofit then. It was just an initiative, uh -huh. and the community saw fit to give this group of guys twelve thousand dollars for the community. So at the end, we had $6,000 left over. We could have did whatever with, mm -hmm. but we cut a $5,000 check to Crenshaw, gave the other $1,000 in incentivized gift cards, and then launched the organization two weeks directly after that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. And then, I mean, at this, point, at this point, we have hundreds of volunteers getting involved. It's just moving. And by the end of that year in 2020, uh, a group of grassroots organizers, small nonprofit organizations came together. You do a thousand toys, you do a thousand, you do 500, you do that too. We got 10,000 toys. And this is in the middle of the pandemic, so it wasn't any events out there. Right. But we got tons of volunteers to come out. Lines, I mean, lines six lines, lines of, of people just all lined up and down the streets. And we gave all the toys out. But I think what really stuck to me that really kind of broke my heart was people was in there, people were in their cars for six and seven hours mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to get some toys and yes. some food. And I said, have the gaps between the have and have not grown that far? Oof. And after that, I said, we gotta go deeper. That, that That's why it's bigger to than us. And then instilled to do more. And then instilled to do more. And you're doing more. Yeah. So like, 
how different do you feel like the impact that you've had since you started your mission within the community? What's the difference that you see within the people? You know what I mean? That's a great question. I, so Bigger Nest is built on people power and partnership powers. Like we, we want to create amazing volunteer opportunities because when you look at advocacy and, 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 and activism, it's a loaded word. Sometimes people are like, what does the work mean? What does mm -hmm. do the work mean? Mm -hmm. Well, that's getting out volunteering. That's getting involved. Exactly. And so it's, it's, it's making it to the bare necessity of people just coming out and getting involved, but then also what, bringing partners out to be able to come and collaborate. And by doing that, it's been able to explode. We have hundreds of partners. We have thousands yeah. of volunteers. And it's not just me. It's everybody else saying, wow, I didn't know that I could be a person to be able to give back at yep. such a large level. And I'm like, yeah, every single person in this planet should be able to serve their communities using the gifts and the talents that they have. Mm -hmm. And you set the example of that. So now it's more people volunteering, more children and people are being blessed, yeah. which helps the community. Yeah. All right. Well, you'll stick around for a little bit. Yeah, I will. All right, more with Tyrone when we retire. We're back with Tyrone Nance, the founder of It's Bigger Than Us. I love that title. But please tell me about Tis the Season, your event you got coming up. Yes, so this is our fourth annual Tis the Season campaign where we've been giving out over 40,000 toys over the last four years. So this year... That is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So this year, we have five days of impact, and the last day is going to be our Winter Wonderland event at the Crenshaw Mall, where we're going to have thousands of toys, I love it. reindeers, reindeers, trains, <gasps> snow, youth and adult live performance, and hundreds and hundreds of volunteers being able to come out and serve the community. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Did you come up with these ideas? Like, where does the vision come from? It, it comes from a it comes from a collection of people. I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a vessel. It comes from my wife. It comes from our community partners. It's I, I'm really just an extension yes. of the amazing people that we get to partner with and get to work with. Mm, I love this. Okay, tell us. Yes, it deserves a hand, y'all. It really does. To just see the children being blessed. I mean, some because again, it's, this re it touches me yeah. because I have my foundation, the Julie D. King Gift Foundation, and every year the wish is hopefully there's someone to give to, and we keep up with these children throughout the years, watch them be babies and then graduate from school. We have oh, a wow. school supply drive, and so it's like you're instilling in the youth yeah. that little gift, that little moment to let them know positivity is acknowledged makes such a huge difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to see more people advocate for that, be examples to it and for it and for the babies, that's our future. It Absolutely. makes a huge difference. Absolutely. You know? So tell me, what is the ultimate goal for It's Bigger Than Us? The ultimate goal for It's Bigger Than Us is to continue to impact the greater community of LA as well as the world. We want to be more sustainable. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking for funding and we're always looking for opportunities to be able to deepen our roots. But at the heart of it, we want to create more impact, more right. bridge builders. Because in order to bridge gaps, you need bridge builders. Every single bridge person, builders. all of you here are bridge builders. You need to utilize your platforms, whether it's your jobs, whether it's the people that you know, to be able to share yep. with everybody else across this world. And that's how you create change. And so for us, it's to, to continue inspiring. Mm -hmm. It's continue driving down impact in the community of South LA as well as the world, yes. and keep it, inspire the nation. Yep, start at home and then you'll continue to bless others. Oh my goodness, well, it is the season of surprises here at the Jennifer Hudson Show, and we have a surprise for you. No. Each one of our audience members brought a toy for your event this weekend. <sighs> yeah, let's show them, y'all. Show them what you got. No! You are builders, oh. bridges, and this is for your cause. Thank you for everything that you are doing. And thank you guys for opening up your hearts and bringing amazing gifts. Y'all, let's keep these type of things going and continue to make the world a better place. Thank you so much for being here. To find out how you can get involved or donate to this amazing cause, go to our website. Thank you again for being here. Thank y'all for joining us. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.